So many of you will be familiar with the blockbuster movie franchise The Matrix. The film's protagonist Neo, played by Keanu Reeves, discovers we're living in a simulated reality hundreds of years from now. But what if it was true? Melvin Vopson is an associate professor in physics at the University of Portsmouth, and he claims we may be characters in an advanced virtual world. I'm delighted to say he joins me now. Welcome to the show. And this is your book, Melvin. This is Reality Reloaded, the scientific case for a simulated universe. Reality Reloaded, is that a reference to Matrix Reloaded, by any chance? Kind of, yes. Okay. Um, so this is truly fascinating research. Um, what I really did is uh, to discover a new law of physics. Um, I call this the second law of information dynamics. And um, this is in analogy to something that we already know called the second law of thermodynamics. And this tells us how everything evolves in the universe um, to the highest disorder and the lowest energy state. Any physical system and the entire universe tends to evolve into a specific way. Um, in fact, actually, I can demonstrate this. I thought about this. I have a magical um, liquid here. Okay. Um, it's called red wine. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to pour a bit of red wine into this glass of water. And um, what you are going to see there, you are going to see firsthand I'll how, show the, I'll show the audience. how the physical entropy works. Um, essentially, the two liquids mix, um, mix up each other and um, they will reach an equilibrium state where um, the maximum disorder um, is achieved um, and all the molecules are equally mixed into a pinkish color and this is the highest entropy. We can it's just bad wine at this point. It's exactly, it's yeah, undrinkable. Yeah. So this is, we, we can actually put a number on this, we can uh, measure it, calculate it. Uh, the entropy of my kid's bedroom uh, approach is infinite, um, if <laughs> the level of disorder. But what I discovered, I discovered that if you examine the entropy of information states, not physical entropy, just information states, it goes exactly in opposite direction to the physical entropy. So instead of what Boltzmann tells us, it should increase over time, yes. the information entropy decreases over time. Now, why would that signify that none of this is real? It's a very good question. To, to, to answer that, I need to explain what is information entropy. So this Do we comes, have time, Melvin? We, to, in one paragraph, I'm done. Let's see. So um, in 1941, Shannon, um, Claude Shannon, an American mathematician, he gave us um, the information theory. And essentially, he gave us the unit of uh, digital data and um, the, the unit of a bit, okay? And he gave us a formula, the information entropy formula, that um, gives us the most optimal, optimal, compressed way of transmitting data or um, storing data, if you want, in a nutshell. And I found that the universe does this in everything. So the universe follows this same pattern or this same law? That are applied to computational processes and uh, optimization and compression of data. Okay. So why would the universe do that unless we, it's a giant computer or maybe we live in a simulation? But, but okay, so the, I suppose the counterpoint to that might be, I'm speaking to someone who knows nothing about any of this, but I'm going to try anyway. Um, if you're detecting uh, that the natural world follows these laws and patterns that are reminiscent of the way that computers work and computer systems operate. Uh, but surely if this is a world that is created by computers, they might... Ha uh, oh no, I'm getting this... How does this work, Mel? Like, <sighs> could it not be... This is just a fingerprint. This is just a, a supporting evidence. I'm not saying we're in a simulation. All I'm saying is I discovered a new law. Yes. It's a mega addition to, to physics but, and to our tools to understand nature so you've and outlined universe. it in this book. It, it's in there, yes. Okay, do you talk at all in the book about how what would the ramifications be, though? I mean, it, you know, if you say we're in a simulation... That's a good question, yeah. Who, who is simulating us? Who runs the simulation? Oh, the, the simulation hypothesis is yes. a philosophical theory, okay? So yes. I, I'm not doing philosophy. I'm not even speculating who is doing this, for what purpose, what's our role in the simulation. That's not your All business, I'm looking yeah. at is like a deep scientific evidence to prove or disprove this. Yes. Um, so this, this but, is my interest. But, but can but, it ever be disproved? Because... You know, the things that you're discovering, as fascinating as they are, they're never going to be confirmation of this, are they? It, Unless we wake up covered in that amniotic fluid with a pole in the back of our head, <laughs> then we'll know. To, to you, me, and everyone here, and everyone else, um, it will make no difference whether yeah. we are or not in a simulation. And that's the, the reason is we don't have a reference frame to distinguish what's real and what's not real. So let, let's, let's make it clear. So it yes. wouldn't make any difference. The only difference we'll make is in deep scientific investigations and understanding the physics, 
and how the, the world works. Okay, yes. so you need to look for, if we, let's assume we live in a simulation, okay? So what okay. does it mean? It means there is a program or a code yeah. running the universe, okay? So that implies a program and yes. implies a lot of information that makes this possible. Yes. So to, f to prove that we are in a simulation, you need to find one of the two things. Either you find the information that makes this possible, all the variables, the code itself and everything, or a proof of the code. And I think so I found the proof of the, of the code through okay. the second law of information dynamics. So the codes that, okay, but the codes that are computed, the, the sort of systems that you are detecting are similar to that in nature, the codes that are in our computer systems. Not, not, it, it's, not, it's not just in nature, in, in, even in DNA and RNA. So this discovery is actually so um, remarkable. It challenges Darwin's um, evolution theory. I discovered that g genomes are mutating, not randomly, as is the consensus today. I discovered they are mutating in a way that always their information entropy reduces. So even living organisms are following this rule that permeates the entire universe and transcends physics, biology, cosmology, everything, yes. atomic physics. So it looks like there is a optimization mechanism built into the fabric of the universe okay. to, to optimize the, the, the data processing, the computational process. Um, and the does it trouble you at all? Well, you it know, does. When, it, when, it does. when, when Darwin discovered his theory, he hated it. I, 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 hate it. I hate it as well. I, I was not looking for the matrix. I was just uh, <laughs> investigating the information entropy and the, the time evolution in various uh, diverse systems. And um, that is a almost an accidental conclusion of my research, but okay. it's not, I was not looking for that. Well, you know, you've, you've baffled <clears throat> me, I'm honest, but um, I, I, I wonder what the audience think about it. Do the audience, just by a show of hands, how many of you think we are living in a computer simulation? N n none. <laughs> right, you're going to have a lot of work to do now. Uh, but, <laughs> well, buy my book. And <laughs> but, but you have got a book, and the book is called <laughs> Reality Reloaded, The Scientific Case for a Simulated Universe. Uh, good luck with it, Melvin. I will read it, because I'm fascinated, but I don't pretend to understand any of it. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Melvin.